Hey everyone, I'm publishing this on May 23rd, which is George Osborne's birthday, which now means we've had more months of coronavirus than he's had jobs. It's hard to tell really because what with social distancing, he's probably added cleaning the house to his CV, or perhaps he prefers to live in filth. You know, a lot of anonymous people online say he's into filth. I've never met the man though, from what I read he does seem like the sort of chap that probably closes his laptop at 8 o'clock so he can stand and listen to people clapping outside and assume that the public are celebrating his stewardship of the evening standard. Anyway, I imagine the one job he wouldn't want to be doing right now is the old Chancellor of the Exchequer one, seeing as all this is a time when there's actual serious work to be done and major decisions to be made, all amidst a no doubt shambles where the economic models are falling apart like an Airfix model spitfire assembled by a young child. I imagine that Gideon Osborne actually probably quite likes Airfix models, what with all the glue and the naphthalene vapours, although in the real world the word solvent has a far more economic meaning, because right now the Western world is voluntarily embracing the economic equivalent of self-immolation. Perhaps cutting limbs off would be a better analogy, because the Prime Minister continues to convince a jovial charm and indifference that's reminiscent of the Black Knight in that Monty Python film, while the business owners across the country are screaming more akin to John Cleese demanding that the government fix the dead parrot, I mean the dead economy, and reopen things. The current situation is forecast to cost around £500 billion by the time it's done, between government borrowing, lost investment, other costs and the like, and that's literally the cost of a manned mission to Mars, or the kind of outlay you're looking at if you wanted to see Accrington and Stanley win the Champions League. Certainly if money talks then it's saying goodbye, and for no real reason other than maintaining the status quo. And yes, every life counts, though currently 36,000 people have died from the coronavirus, and that's a lot less than have died from other things since the start of the year. You can't help but wonder if that half a trillion pounds would have been better spent curing cancer, or at the very least become the world research capital in the process. It would be nice if the UK were the sort of place where people came to cure cancer, rather than the place that Far Eastern betting syndicates go to launder their money before they eventually get uncovered by the mail on Sunday. That money though, for context imagine the top 500 towns and cities across the UK. At that point you're down to smallish places like Fathersham, Broadstairs, Dumbarton, Truro. Now imagine giving every single one of them a billion pounds to spend, no strings attached, and wasting whatever they want. Probably community arts projects and pay rises I would imagine. Nonetheless, you examine it in that context and you kind of quickly realise what kind of money we're talking about. And the return on investment is going to be worse than that time King Philip of Spain bought hundreds of boats to destroy the country. In my mind, the only way this thing really ends is with inflation exploding above 20%, or maybe just a massive rate in pensions. Essentially the same thing, really. What can you do, though? At the moment, when I'm not wasting my money on eBay, personally, I'm putting it into cryptocurrency and gold to prepare. I'd frankly advise others to do the same, or at the very least, buy an investment on eBay. And by investment, I don't mean a classic Nintendo system, or a classic car, or actually anything in my wish list, really. I should probably delete all that. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.